Your friends at Luther College High School, hello. My name's Cameron Fraser. I'm the minister at Knox Metropolitan United Church in downtown Regina, here on Treaty 4 territory. I'm standing in my backyard and you're looking at me through a phone or computer screen. It's a pretty odd way to make acquaintance. Now, I've got a pretty nice backyard, if I do say so myself, and even though the sun's been shining today, still it's, it's not looking its best. There's leaves and muck all over the ground, and a sort of gross blue tarp covering what hopefully will be a beautiful vegetable garden in a few months. But it feels like the right kind of space to be speaking about Lent, the time in the Christian tradition in which we think intentionally about growth and waiting. We think about beauty and justice too, but the focus is on what could be, what we hope will be, but isn't yet. What isn't yet, what could be, feels like a very universal theme these days, doesn't it? I want to begin with a song. The lyrics should be posted there for you to see. It's called Beautiful Things by Lisa and Michael Gungor. And it's a beautiful song. I mean, the title would be presumptuous if it wasn't, and I hope we can do it justice. It's a song about longing and about believing in beauty. Beautiful things for ourselves, our societies, and even our world. Believing that they're possible even when we don't see them. At least not in full, at least not yet. Kind of like how the garden doesn't look great today, but come mid-July it should look spectacular. The song's also about seeing those first signs that beauty is coming. Like the little sprouts of green in the pots on our windowsill that we'll plant in the garden in a few weeks. It's also a song about praying, hoping, and longing, whatever those terms ring true for you, that we can be made new. We as in each of us, but also we as in our communities, our societies, and that out of that newness, we bring beauty into the world. It's a song I think that works if one is part of the Christian tradition, if one is a part of another faith, another philosophy, or no faith at all. Feel free to sing along. Spouse Cheryl's going to give me a hand here.
for singing along. I'm gonna move the camera here. Hopefully you can follow with me. The Christian tradition, the Thursday before Easter is known as Maundy Thursday. Now that's Maundy, not Monday. Monday, coming from the word mandate or to command. I think it's got a beautiful message in it, whether one is part of the Christian tradition, another philosophy or faith, or none at all. Here's the story. Jesus of Nazareth is going to come into Jerusalem, the capital city, to celebrate the Passover, his people's festival of freedom. It's a festival still celebrated today. Our siblings in the Jewish tradition begin so on Wednesday at sunset. This is where Jesus will stand up to those elite rich folk who oppress the poor and the outcast. He will speak truth to power, and he will be arrested and killed, not because of a religious difference or disagreement, but because he witnesses to love over oppression, to compassion and connection over empire and might. But first, Jesus will gather with his friends for one last evening together, and they'll share a meal. But before they share the meal, Jesus will take a basin of water and a towel, and he will wash his friend's feet. He will give them a mandate, a command, a mandi if you will. As I have done this for you in love, do this for one another. As I've been reading this story this year, I've been thinking a lot about this moment of washing. Because for about the past month almost, I've been thinking a lot about washing hands. A simple act of washing hands. Now, I washed my hands pretty regular before I ever heard the word coronavirus, and I'm guessing you folks did as well. But I've been doing it more often these past few weeks, and I've been thinking a lot more about it. I mean, I've been thinking about making sure I'm washing for 20 seconds, I'm getting under my fingernails and in between my fingers, but much more than that. I've been thinking about what the simple act of washing my hands has come to me in this moment we find ourselves together. It's become an act not just about ourselves, our own health or hygiene. It's become about others. Washing our hands has become one of the most basic ways that we as people care for each other right now. We know this virus can affect people and they might not even know it, not show any symptoms. And so we've been asked to act like we might be infected and take precautions to care for and protect each other. So we wash our hands. We keep distance from each other. Not out of fear that we might get sick, but to care for others, an act of care, an act of love. We do it to protect people who are vulnerable, to protect people who have compromised immune systems, to protect people who work in healthcare who themselves are acting out of tremendous courage, love, and compassion. Now back to Maundy Thursday. Jesus washed his friends' feet and told them to do likewise to others. 
seems like an unusual action to us. And I mean, this was like in a pre-pedicure world. But let's think about the foot thing for just a moment. Jesus is asking his friends to pay attention to that which is often overlooked. This virus has reminded us collectively of the things we often as a society ignore. The needs of people who work in childcare, who work in education, who care for elders, who grow food, who transport food, who stock shelves and who work behind cash registers, who work in healthcare, not just doctors and nurses and therapists, but people who wheel sick people into their beds or who clean and care for hospitals. We suddenly call them essential, not because they've all of a sudden become that, but because we never needed to recognize them as essential before this. And with some exceptions, we're understanding that we never acted previously like their work even mattered. The song said, you make beautiful things out of the dust and you make beautiful things out of us. What if when this whole thing is over, we continue to pay attention to the care that we give people who are the most vulnerable? What if when this is all over, we pay attention to how people will be fed, how people will be cared for? And if we pay attention to the peoples whose work allows us to be fed, allows us to be cared for, and what if we continue, when all this is over, to check in with one another, as we've started doing more and more, really meaning it and really taking the time to ensure that each other are well and safe. I mean, if we kept on doing this, wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? I wonder if one of the calls for us, no matter what our religion, or our philosophy is. I wonder if one of our calls is to learn to pay attention to the things we used to ignore because we suddenly realize how much care and attention it takes for each one of us to flourish. And we finally admit it, and we've been forced to acknowledge how much pain is caused when we don't. Now maybe we won't actually wash each other's feet and I'm okay with that. Toes kind of creep me out if I'm honest. But I hope we'll learn how to nourish the parts of us, I mean the collective us, that we've often overlooked and ignored. So as you go into the next thing that your day has for you, may each of us learn to live empowered by a daring and tender love for the world is waiting for people such as these. Dear friends, peace be with you.